Wow, I am so thrilled to be here with all of you today, um, tonight, from everyone calling in, right? It's 5 p.m. in Las Vegas. I'm sure it's a lot later for people out in the East Coast, but I'd like to welcome all of you here. And, um, you know, I'm really excited for the future and what the future holds in regards to our business. As um, Lisa will announce later on, today is actually going to be our last weekly English Himalaya call. And uh, we actually started this English Zoom meetings every week as a result of the pandemic. When everything shut down last March, you know, it was tough because we weren't able to meet offline. And um, the leaders, they just started to start these weekly calls to keep the energy and the morale high during the pandemic for all the distributors in Himalaya. So we've had our weekly Korean calls and our weekly um, English calls. And as we seen the results of the explosive growth in the US and just the Americas region as a whole, we realized that the Americas region is doing something right to be experiencing such big growth. And we decided it would be better to leverage off of their systems and off of their lectures on what they're doing because we saw some overlap with some of our events. So as this is our final call, this is not the end, but you know, I view it really as a beginning for us to align with the big teams that are growing in the U.S. because even though we are all, well, many of us are Korean Americans um, or Korean Canadians, we are doing the business in the Americas region. So I think that it's important that we will all combine our energies to show the American teams the power of the Koreans also. So um, globally, our market is one of the biggest, Korea is one of the biggest markets, you know, in the top five of New Skin over the past 36 years. And right now we're seeing such big growth. And I think a lot of times we've been being influenced by the growth of the Korean markets, the markets in Korea. And I think it's now our turn as ambassadors of the US market, as we're experiencing so much growth for us to inspire and lead the growth for the executives in Korea now. So um, as I was prepping for this call, I was really struggling with what to talk about. And over the past year and a half, I think I've done about four or five um, Zoom trainings for our group. And for this one, I was like, hmm, what should I talk about? And I just went through past PowerPoints and just kind of put everything in one. So it's kind of like um, a big stew. It's like a jumble of information all in one that I'm going to be talking about. Um, and I know we're all here because we want to be successful in our lives. So as I was going through my trainings, I realized that I always kept going back to the same slides every single time. And it's because it's so important for us to recognize and remember again that this is the crucial building blocks of our business. So as we're all striving on our journey to success, there are three things that we really need in our business to succeed. And those three things are skills, knowledge, and mindset. And I'm sure many of you guys have heard this before, but it's so important that you just need to keep on talking about it all the time. And as we talk about this, you know, as we build our business, what happens? It's inevitable that customers will leave for another brand and partners may just quit our business. And when we stop to analyze, why do people quit this new skin business? Is it because of lack of skills? Is it because of lack of knowledge or is it because of a lack of mindset? And, you know, when I really dove into this question, you know, I realized that a lot of it has to do with mindset. So we've always trained that to be successful in our business, you need 10% of skills, 10% of knowledge, 80% of mindset, 80%. So big, right? It's such a big factor in our success. But it's not to say that skills and knowledge are not important. These are absolutely crucial to building a strong, successful business. So when I talk about knowledge, um, I don't think I've ever really gone into the details of the knowledge part. So when we look at the knowledge that we need to have to be successful, we must be knowledgeable in certain areas as we build a new skin business. First and foremost, we need to be knowledgeable on the products. Right? As um, Sorry, Paul, I don't mean to we're launching, that. your slides mm -hmm. aren't showing. I don't know. Yeah. What slide is it on now? Is it all gone? No, it's just your face. Oh, sorry. All right, hold on.
How's that? You guys see it now? Yes, no, wait, that's not the one. Yeah. Hold on. Oh, sorry, everyone. Bear with me one second. How's that? Back? Okay. Yes, we see okay. you now. Thank you. All right, are you guys, you guys see the knowledge slide now? Good. All right, so as we build this business, we must be knowledgeable on certain areas of our business. So we need to be knowledgeable on the products. You know, I'm sure we were all super busy this past week as we were launching collagen, the collagen preview, right? And honestly, I, we, me and Lisa, we had no idea how big and popular the collagen products were because NewSkin didn't have a product, a collagen product before this. So we just never really studied up on that market. And as I studied more on collagen, it was so much knowledge that I gained knowing that there's 28 different types of collagen in our body, that there's all these different, you know, type one health for beauty, type two health for joint health. And we need to be able to talk about this intelligently with people. And um, the, more no the more knowledgeable we are, the more credibility we'll have to our prospects, to our potential customers. So we need to know all the details of the products. We need to know the comp plan. We need to know just general business, entrepreneurship, the direct selling industry. We need to know the difference between linear, linear and leveraged income. We need to increase our knowledge in all of these areas to become a pro in our business. Now, knowledge alone will not yield great results, okay? Knowledge has to be paired with skills. So when I talk about the skills that we need in our business, what are some of the skills that we need? Right? We need to have good communication skills. We need to have team building skills, scale skills. Eventually, as your team grows, right, you're going to need to build and develop your event planning skills. And never forget that we are in the business of direct selling, aka network marketing, right, or multi-level marketing. And if we want to get to the highest levels in the network marketing business, we need to be experts in marketing. And this is where so many people I realize don't spend a lot of their time. Um, I'm reading this um, new book lately um, and it's all about traction marketing. And it was written in 2010, 11 years ago. So they're referencing um, the internet and emails. This was before social media took off. You know. Right now, we're so used to social media being a part of our daily lives, but it hasn't even been a decade since it's become mainstream to everybody, right? And that's how fast social media kind of took off. And if you think about social media, it was built on the premise of network marketing, right? When you think about Mark Zuckerberg, what did he create in that dorm room in, Har in Harvard? Right? He was like, man, if we could just get five of our friends to find five of their friends, to find five of their friends and go from Harvard to Princeton to Yale and connect a network of people that are collect just, co you know, connect college kids together. And it started with the premise of let's find five people, right? But the leveraged growth that happened to now where there's billions of users, do you think it would have been possible for Mark Zuckerberg to one-on-one -on -one reach out to a billion people and say, hey, try my platform. No, he needed to leverage the power of a network. And that's exactly what social media is. So we need to marry the, the skills to the knowledge that we have in New Skin, right? So, you know, for um, many of the people that know how I do the business, I focus a lot on the top down. I focus mainly on the business and I don't really talk about product that much. Right? So as I talk about the business, I don't talk about new skin or their revenues or their management team. I talk about the difference in linear and leveraged income. Right? So as I talk about this, I had to increase my knowledge on these two types of incomes. Right? And now I gained that knowledge. But as I explain to people the difference between the linear income as you trade your time for money versus leveraged income where you're earning money based on the efforts of others, right? I need to be able to effectively communicate that and influence people to realize that new skin is one of the best leveraged vehicles out there for the typical person. 
right? And to be able to take that knowledge and persuade someone to realize that new skin is the proper way, that is marketing skill. That is the sales skill, right? So it's the same with the product then, okay? Um, I can talk all day about the microcurrents um, of the Galvanic Spa, how the plus and minus, you know, charges and how the body shaping gel has a negative charge and, you know, all these different, talk about the products, my knowledge is vast, but if I don't have the skills to do a proper demo, if I don't have the sales skills to ask for a close at the end of that demo, right, all of that knowledge kind of goes to waste, right? So keep that in mind. You know, I think many of the people in this meeting right now have vast amount of knowledge when it comes to our business. How great are your skills, right? I'm sure people, there are people here that have great skills that lack knowledge and vice versa, right? So we need to be strong in both of these, right? So, um, you know, when it comes to the sales skills that we need to develop, you know, I like to keep things very simple. So it's like, all right, these are the skills you need to develop. Learn how to invite people, learn how to present, learn how to follow up. And the pipeline is what's gonna build your sales business, right? So, you know, when it comes to these simple things, when people ask you how to do our business, Everything has to be simple, right? It's like, all right, Paul, how do, you, how do you grow a big successful new skin business? All right, you need to focus on two things, recruiting and retention, right? We need to focus on two things. What else? Customers and partners, right? Simplify everything down to two or three things because that's what people can actually remember in their minds. Right? And for all of us to be great marketers, we need to really be the great storytellers, right? Every story, you know, as I've shared in the past, they have to follow a certain blueprint. They have to follow the blueprint of struggle to solution. Nobody wants to hear a story of just success and happiness, right? What, you know, everyone says, oh, you know, the movie always has a happy ending. For a movie to have, have a happy ending, there must have been some struggle or sadness in the middle of the movie to create that happy ending, right? Because if it starts off happy and the middle is happy and it ends happy, it's just the ending of a happy story, right? So, um, you know, I, I like to use the example of Minari, right? It, it won so many huge awards, you know, internationally. And, you know, I, I think about this movie a lot, right? And, you know, when I think of my parents, when they saw this movie, they loved it. They, they watched it several times because it was a story of almost their lives. You know, most of our parents who immigrated from Korea to the States, they kind of lived a, a some, somewhat similar version of what this family went to. Right? But let's say there was, in, the, in a new version of the movie, the family moves from California to Arizona, they start their farm, the harvest is fresh, they have so much you know, yield from their farm and they have so much customer demand and they live happily ever after. People would have walked out of that movie theater saying, hey, that kind of stunk. You know, that was kind of boring, right? There was no challenge, there was no ups and downs, there was no struggle. And you know, if a story does not have that, then it's not gonna be engaging. It's not gonna be compelling. It's not gonna attract anybody to wanna watch it. But whenever we do this new skin business, when we share our story, a lot of the times we share the good things that people are gonna gain as a result of doing new skin, right? And if that's what you guys have been doing, let's say, and you're kind of frustrated at where your business is, instead of talking about all the good things, right? Before you do that, talk about the pain points. Right? Find the pressure points that are causing people pain because that's what's gonna make people wanna listen to what you have to say. That's gonna make them wanna listen to your solution. So, you know, if I were to come up on stage and was like, hey, I was really successful in my career before and I joined New Skin and everybody I talked to joined and everybody in my front line became Ruby and here I am, right? Made millions in the business and happily ever after. People will be like, great. Good for you. Oh, it's hard whatever. Have a nice life, right? That's what they're going to say. But in my story, I talk about my dread and my corporate life, the struggles that I went through, my frustration at having a job, my lack of time freedom, the visions I wanted for the future and not having a solution for it. And even as I started the business and joined New Skin, the struggles that I had in the New Skin business as I was getting rejected from my friends, right? When you guys as distributors in New Skin, as executives in New Skin, hear a speech, what part are you most attracted to? 
the struggles that they go through, right? And that's just human nature. That's why when we turn on the TV and look at the news, 90% is all negative because we are attracted to that type of struggle, right? So, you know, even when we hear, you know, I remember um, it was, I think it was the leadership conference. It was one of the big corporate events. And, um, you know, many of your uplines, you know, $5 billion circle, Jang Jung Sajang gave a speech and it brought the room to tears, right? Even top leaders, 10, $20 million leaders were all tearing up. Why? Because he so greatly portrayed and told the story of the struggles that he went through as an immigrant to America, right? He showed the photos of his home when he, you know, was first started New Skin to his home now, right? And because we were able to follow him on that journey, you know, to, for us to be inside the story as he struggled and eventually found solution with New Skin, that is what sells. Right. So that's why people always say, facts tell, stories sell. So even with the collagen, you know, I didn't, even though I trained myself and I learned the importance of the collagen products, I'm not talking about any of that stuff. I'm telling stories about collagen, people who take collagen, the story of the collagen market, how it's growing, how our liquid compares to the powder. So I found that there were so many people just in our network even in our family, that's the collagen and we had no idea. So I started to ask some questions. You know, what do you like about your brand? What do you not like about your brand? What compelled you to start taking collagen? Why do you take an oral instead of, you know, an external, right? And as I was gathering information, I turned all that information to a story. So as I talked to the next prospect and they're also taking the vital powder, for example, because we found that a lot of our people are taking that, Right? I say, you know what? Two of, the, two of my family members, two of my friends are also taking the exact product you're taking because they heard about the great things that collagen does for our body. But they also shared that they were frustrated that they have to mix it every time and um, it can get messy if they're on the go. They, some of them didn't like the taste, but ours is a convenient pouch, you know? And there's other liquid brands out there. And I even researched those brands because I wanted that knowledge as I tell these stories to people, right? And I found that there's other drink collagens, collagen drinks. But when I looked at how they were sold, they were sold in a 15 ounce bottle and you had to pour out 15 milliliter spoonfuls every day. And that's also a pain in the butt for people that are busy and on the go. We're like, throw three of these in your purse and you're good for three days. Just remember to open your purse and take one every day right? You don't have to pack a powder and find a bottle to mix it in. And because of these stories of other people's stories, you know, that we were selling it to, they were like, oh, you know what? They're going from this brand to that brand too. All right, I'll try it. Well, you know, Paul, everything sounds great. I will love an easy pouch that I can just take on the go, right? So, you know, it's these stories that are going to compel people to join you in this business. You know, when I talk about the lifestyle of new skin, I don't just talk about on the beach every day with my son or, you know, living the life with our family. Sure, I'll share these photos, but this is just the happy ending, right? And as I share this, people are going to look at this and be like, you know what? I take my kids to the beach too, right? So what makes this different, right? So as I share this photo, I don't just share this one photo when I talk about lifestyle. I share a photo of, yeah, Anybody can go to the beach with their kids. There's nothing special about going to the beach. What makes this special for me is that I'm not going on the weekends when it's crowded. I'm going on the weekdays when it's empty, right? And as people see this, they see this as a pain point because they're not able, so some of them aren't able to go to the beach on the weekdays because they have to go to their jobs, right? So, you know, as you're going out talking to people, remember the importance of being able to relate with them. And people relate more with you when it comes to hardship, struggle, real life things that people endure through every day, right? And when you can get that connection and relatability through that kind of story, your results will be so, so huge, right? Skills that we need to develop. We need to develop our closing sk you know, skills, right? So, you know, sales has many different aspects to it. People are like, I don't like sales. Okay, there's a lot of different parts to sales. To just generalize, you know, that in one big blanket 
my statement, you need guys need to dig deeper. Oh, what part of sales don't you like? Do you not like the reaching out to people? Do you not like the presentation part? Do you not like the follow-up part? Do you hate asking for the sale? Find out where people's problems are in the business, right? And help them to overcome that specific problem, right? So if they're like, oh, I didn't like following up. So it's like, oh, so if following up wasn't an issue for you, then you wouldn't mind doing sales, right? Once we get to the real honest answer of what people are trying to tell us, then we can really figure out how to bring them um, to see the value of new skin, right? Anybody I talk to, is this real? Can I do it? Is this real? Can I do it? That's the only two questions in my mind, no matter what comes out of their mouth. And um, it's so important for you guys to remember if someone's like, I don't have time, what they're wondering is, can I do it? Because I'm busy. Right? When they're asking you, oh, how does this collagen differ from this other brand? They're asking you, is this real? Does this really work? Right? So you have to know that every single question and every statement that people give you is going to ultimately, you're going to be able to funnel it down into two columns, right? So as you see, you know, this chart right here, extend the lines, the vertical lines down, right? And put your contact lists in those columns and be like, okay, you know, Ellen, she's a 789. She, you know, put her in the, can I do a column? Oh, you know, but Lisa, let's say she's wondering if it's still real. She's in the four, five, six. So put her name down there. And now you know exactly what people in each column need to be swayed to understand the value of new skin, new skin even more. Right? So, um, you know, these are all part of the sales skills. So, you know, as I was talking before about storytelling, about, you know, finding that struggle and closing and, and just being able to talk knowledge about the products, those seem so, so important, right? So how is it that mindset is 80% and skills is 10% and knowledge is only 10%? Well, this business, network marketing, is an emotional roller coaster. One day, you are going to get so many yeses and you're going to feel like you're going to hit Team Elite in a month. And literally, you're going to go to bed and the next day you wake up and you may be slammed with a bunch of rejections all day long. And now you're wondering if you can even last till the end of the month. And that roller coaster, everybody goes through. Right? And in the beginning of the business, those um, roller coasters are a lot higher, higher highs and lower lows. So, you know, that feeling when you drop... <sighs> You know, when you go down a big side or when you're free falling or jumping out or bungee jumping, right? Jumping out of a plane. Like that feeling you have, that downhill pressure, right? And it just feels like the life's getting sucked out of you. The energy is getting sucked out of you, right? You're going to have days when you're in such a slump like that. Maybe not days, maybe weeks, months. There's people that stay in slumps for years, right? So what good is all that knowledge and all that skills if you don't have the desire to talk to new skin to anybody, right? The mindset, the strong mindset, right? You need strong mentality because when you're in that slump, when you hear those no's, you're going to need to get back up. And a lot of the times you're going to have your sponsor or your partners there to, to kind of get you out of that slump. But if you're alone, you're going to need to figure that out on your own, right? And that can come from reading books, working out, listening to music, whatever it takes for you to not just be in that negative, defeated mindset, right? So the reason mindset is 80% of our business is because a strong mindset will give us the strength and desire to turn those skills and knowledge into action. And only through those actions can we get the results. You know, a couple of days ago, I was having um, a meeting with two of my partners from Korea and, um, you know, they're first and, you know, they're third and fourth levels, right? One on top of each other. And the sponsors are Emerald and the partners are Ruby. And they've been in the business for, I think, three, four years. They're, they're growing in the business and they felt like they hit a roadblock. So they, they um, called me and asked me, you know, if I can do a meeting for them. And as we were having that meeting, I was like, you know, what's up? You know, tell me where you're struggling. And they were, they were frustrated because they weren't getting the results that they were getting in the beginning of the business. They were struggling because they didn't have that same enthusiasm and, and drive and just level of action taking that they had when they were in the beginning of the business. 
And I told them, you know, as you guys progress to each level in the compensation plan, um, the work that you're going to have to do is going to increase. And right? so, um, oh, let me go on the slides. So I, I brought them back to this slide where we have the pin titles and the average monthly income. And, um, you know, I said, as you guys increase in the levels in our business, what's going to happen is, you're gonna to have to layer on additional work on top. So if you go from a gold partner to a lapis partner, right? Now you have to do everything you did as a gold, but now you have to add another layer of work, another layer of knowledge and skills and leadership to maintain that lapis, right? And then when you go from lapis to ruby, now you have to add another layer on top of that. So. I was telling, you know, I always tell people that our business is like rolling a snowball up the hill, all right? So when you start off rolling the snowball up a mountain, and right, what happens? The snowball will gradually increase in size as it packs on more snow as it's going upward, right? And that's what it's like. They were feeling the pressures and the weight of being a Ruby partner or Emerald director. And I told them, I was like, if you think, Emerald is hard, diamond's gonna be even harder. From diamond to blue diamond is gonna be even, you know, so much harder than that. This is the time where you guys have to prepare yourselves and grow, right? So, um, you know, until you get to that peak of that mountain, right? As you're pushing that snowball up the hill, I'll tell you from diamond to, to blue diamond, it's gonna feel overwhelming. That snowball is gonna seem bigger than you are and you're gonna wonder, am I gonna be able to get this snowball over the peak so that it can roll down on its own and I'll have leverage, leveraged income, right? And I'll tell you, when you think about it all by yourself, it's daunting, right? It's overwhelming. But as you get up and as you're pushing that snowball up, remember this, that from the ruby level, emerald, diamond, blue diamond level, as you're pushing that snowball up, as you get higher, you're not pushing it alone anymore. Your team, your partners, they're gonna be the ones that's gonna be helping you working as a team to get you guys over that hump. And once you get to the top and it rolls over, that's when the freedom comes. Right, so keep that in mind. I was telling them that, um, you know, go back to the basics. We always talk about going back to the way it was in the beginning. And honestly, like, it's so easy to say, so hard to do. But um, as one of the partners, she got into management mode, she was really stuck. And I was like, well, how did you do social media in the past? She's like, I was hunting, right? And as social media has grown in the new skin business, some of the things that we really need to realize is that social media, doing a post, right, is no different than putting bait in the water, right? We have our fishing rod, we put bait on the hook, and we put bait in the water, and we're waiting for fish to come, right? It's going to take you a long time to grow your business like that, right? What you guys need to do is you throw the bait in the water, and you're spear fishing. You are literally targeting all the people that like or engage with your post and you're going hunting, right? Stop, you know, waiting for the fish to come to your hook, throw bait everywhere, look around and wherever there are fish, you need to have a targeted focus of, all right, I'm gonna catch you. And the way I'm gonna catch you is to use all the knowledge that I've gained about your life, about you know your habits and things that you enjoy. And I'm gonna use my skills to show you new skin. Right? And these are the things that have to be developed over the journey, right? All of you are somewhere on this chart on your journey to team elite and your journey to freedom, okay? And no matter where you are, I guarantee you, the next step is within your reach. But you have to ask yourself, what do I need to add on? What do I, what more do I need to learn? What skill do I need to further develop for me to graduate to the next level? As any kid that's in school, if they want to go from fifth grade to sixth grade, they have to take a test, right? And they need to show that they know this much to advance to the next level.
right? And if you find that you're stuck in your business, just, you know, that's fine. Just ask yourselves, all right, where am I in the business? I wonder where I'm stuck. And a lot of the times I'll tell you, you're not going to be able to see it within yourself, right? So that's why you, sh- you need to ask you know, uplines, mentors, or other leaders say, hey, I, I'm stuck at this level. I'm stuck with this. And I don't know where to break through or how to break through. I don't know even know where my blocks are, right? Because if you're experiencing them for the first time, you don't know what you don't know. But someone that's been around the block, someone that's gone on that journey already, they'll be able to know exactly, oh, this is where you're stuck. And this is what you need to do now, right? So just focus on this and let's get you over this hump, right? So as many of you in this room are already leaders, right? This is what you need to focus on as you build your team. You know, your leadership, for anyone in here who is a gold partner, your leadership has begun, right? Because now this is where your leader development comes in. When you're at the Ruby level, you're a leader that's capable of leading four people down the path of leadership success, right? So keep that in mind. Now, um, you know, I guess I'll close with the story. Many of you know that I was introduced to New Skin from my parents. And I've seen them in this business over the course of 21 years. I've seen how this business has changed. I've seen how this business has changed their lives. And um, two and a half years ago, my parents actually built their dream home. And so they had a half acre of land and they built a 3000 square foot home. And, um, you know, it's a beautiful home. It's always been my mom's dream to have a nice house with a huge backyard where all their grandkids can come and play. And, um, you know, our, throughout my childhood and in New York, and as we've even grown up as young adults in LA, you know, my parents were super successful. We were always living in, you know, 3,000 square foot home for a couple that's in their late seventies, my dad's, you know, turning 80 this year, two people live in a 3000 square foot home, right? And it's huge for them. And three of the bedrooms sit empty most of the time unless families visit. So, you know, thanks to NewSkin, my mom's dream came to fruition, right? Now, every gathering we have, you know, it's in our home, right? So even now my sister's family's visiting from LA, you know, my son has his four cousins here, so they're having a blast, and they're all at my parents' house just running around and enjoying. Right? My mom was also able to fulfill her big dream of having a garden. Growing up, even if we lived in a small thousand square foot apartment, she would still have, she would find like a windowsill or a balcony or some corner of the house that she would turn into a garden. Right? And she would always you know have like she has a green thumb where she just loves plants and flowers and and doing all that and you know as they moved into this house and you know when you look at this photo it looks great right it's like wow what a nice backyard and i remember the two and a half years that she had to put into this backyard because when they moved into this their house this is what the backyard looked like okay it was just dirt. And my mom was like, all right, I'm going to build a farm and a garden and do all this. And we're like, oh man, like we were thinking pool, tennis court, (laughs) but she wanted to have a garden. Right. And um, on this empty land, right. It's not like rich soil. It's dry dirt with lots of rocks. It's desert, you know, ground. And on top of that, Here's the weather for July in Las Vegas. Right? A couple of this past weekend, a couple of days ago, it hit 98. And I was like, oh my God, it's so cool. So that day I was in my backyard doing some landscaping work because it was the coolest day out of the past month that we were in. It was the only day we had under 100. And to us, that feels cool now, right? Because we're used to living in 115 weather, which is ridiculous, right? So, you know, even in the harshest conditions, right? She was able to create this garden, you know, from nothing, from this patch of dirt, right? She was able to turn it into this backyard. And, um, you know, this is just, I think what the left side, the other right side, she was able to turn this side into a farm. So, 
um, I don't know if it's because I've been in New Skin for the past 10 years. You know, when I see photos like this, I think of our business. I think of the New Skin business a lot, right? And when you think about New Skin, when we all start this business, we have nothing. We don't have a single customer. We don't have a single partner. We have nothing. We don't even know the comp plan for most people. We don't know all the great signs. We don't have the knowledge or skills yet. It's just this barren dirt. And, you know, we only have a vision of our future, the dreams in our minds, right, of how we want our lives to be, of how we're going to build this new skin business up, have a global business and live free. That's the only thing we see, right? When I looked at this land, as I shared, I had a vision of a pool, a tennis court, maybe a putting green, but my mom had a vision of a garden. And with that vision, she started planting seeds, right? And as she was planting those seeds, she has to dig holes and take out rocks. And it was so much work. She had to put in all of the sprinkler lines and because she was the only new, she was the only one that had that vision of where the rose garden was going to be, where the fruit garden was going to be. She had to be the one to decide where the irrigation sprinkler lines were going to be placed. But she had that clear vision. And as we were seeing it come to fruition, those a lot of times were like, just stop, just hire someone or, or just do it. But she wanted to do it herself because this was her passion. And, and as she continued to really plant the seeds and nurture them and water them, she was able to create this beautiful garden, right? And in the most extreme conditions, she created a section where it's, you know, she's growing red leaf. There's another where she's growing garlic and scallions and all these other things that she's doing, right? And as she planted the seeds, like she had to give the seeds water and all the nutrients she needs. As you guys plant your seeds, as you guys find your partners, you're gonna to need to give them the water and nutrients. You're gonna to need to give them the knowledge training, the skills training, the motivation, the inspiration that they're gonna to need to grow healthy, right? So, um, you know, another part where our business really tied into this, right? We've been eating fresh tangchu, you know, red leaf lettuce since my mom, like six months after she bought that house. Right? There's no more pure organic thing because she doesn't use any fertilizer. She doesn't use anything. It's like the freshest there is. So it's true organic. And as we saw this, you know, it gets windy in Vegas during the, the spring and fall. On windy days, the wind will carry the seeds, these tiny seeds that's invisible to like our eye, the winds blowing them everywhere. And if you look at what happens, where all of these white arrows are, <laughs> The tangchu, the red leaf lettuce, started to grow where the scal where the scallions are outside of the fence. There was like two batches of red leaf lettuce growing in front of the garage door, in front of the gated entrance, and we were like, "Oh my god, this is crazy!" So it came to a point where there was just so much growing all over the place that my mom started pulling them out. Right? And of course, we were eating it, but then she made like after she pulled it for us to eat, like she was like, "All right, we don't want it to grow there anymore," and she had no intention of growing that much outside that box. But that's kind of how the new skin works. This is our business, right? When I think of my dad, when he was focusing mainly in Korea and then he went to China, right? He focused there and he was in Shanghai and um, Shenyang in China. Those are the only two cities that he really spent most of his four years in China. But now we have partners in over 10 different cities in China. Right? And same for Korea. This is the power of leverage. Once you build it, and once it's healthy, and you because you've built it the right way, the power of leverage is going to go so fast and furious. You're going to be like, what? I have partners here now? Just like we're like, oh my God, there's Tanchu growing in front of this you know, door right next to the AC machine. We have this batch of lettuce. You know, it's kind of, you know, it's funny, but that's the beauty of this business. And so, um, you know, six years, my parents spent, my dad spent planting seeds in the business, right? My mom, now she is the third year and she's wondering, what am I going to plant this season, this upcoming season? But now she's also kind of tired because a half acre of land is not easy to manage, right? Like she's exhausted, like her joints are sore. So she's excited for the collagen, but like now it's kind of like, oh man, um, I was 
trying to tell him like, all right, you know, you've had your garden. Let's, let's put something else in now. <laughs> I'd have to see if she's open for it. But, um, you know, know that you're not going to see the results right away. Right? And I think this is where my, my partners in Korea were a little frustrated because they were working hard and they weren't seeing those results right away. And um, think of gardening. You know, it's true. If you plant an apple tree seed you know, or a lemon seed right now in the ground, you're not going to be harvesting lemons tomorrow. It's going to take months, maybe years for that tree to grow and to finally yield that fruit. And if you guys feel like your business is not growing, even though you're putting in the effort, you're putting in the actions and the time, know that every day that you're working the new skin business, that you're giving it water. You're giving your seeds water and nutrients to grow. So um, keep that in mind. And as we are planting seeds, remember to keep things simple, okay? I um, remember Scott Schwartz, the previous president to the Americas region, and he would always talk about simplifying. And um, it's so important in our business. As you guys advance on the compensation plan to higher pin titles and to higher levels of leadership, you're going to realize that things are going to get more and more complicated. And as things get overcomplicated, you have to kind of pause, step out of yourself and remember, okay, I need to resimplify everything. So we've seen the growth of the Americas regions. It's been absolutely nuts, right? If we want to have explosive growth, you need to have one simple focus. We need to have one simple strategy. And it's up to you guys to figure out what that focus and strategy is going to be, right? Now, more than ever, I think, um, especially in amongst the, the Asian, um, the Asian American um, leadership in the Americas, we're all so excited because of collagen, because the Asian markets weren't that excited with the sunless tanner. They weren't that excited with the toothpaste, but we're excited about the collagen and the pairing of the Luma spot together, right? So it's kind of like, all right, you know, we finally got something where we can get behind, right? So as we do that, as we focus on really building out the collagen market here in the Americas region, remember to keep it simple. I've been studying the growth of all of the different leaders in the Americas region, wondering how they're doing it. And, um, you know, right now we all know one of the fastest and biggest growing teams is Ashley Robichaud's team. And they've been having phenomenal growth. So I'm wondering, how are they growing? What are they doing different from ours? And what can we learn from what they're doing? So I went down a, a Facebook rabbit hole where I was kind of, you know, doing a deep dive into Ashley. I started with Ashley, right? And then I started looking into what her, her leaders and her partners were eventually doing. And I realized that Ashley kept things simple, right? You know, this is what um, Eileen posted about how they were having such explosive growth, right? And it was such a simple duplication model where they had 11 new team elites coming out in a single month last year. So I was, as I was studying, this is when the tanner was really hot. You know, Ashley was focusing strictly on the tanner. She created this post. And she worded it in a way that was simple, concise, um, engageable, right? For people to really come on board with it based on her demographics, because she knows her audience. And once she made this campaign, right? Because that's what they're calling it now. This is a marketing campaign that she created. Right? We as leaders need to create marketing campaigns, whether it's for TR90, whether it's for Lumispa or Collagen. We're the ones that need to create the content or the campaign. Right? So she created this and then she got her core leaders to be like, all right, this is what it's going to be. What do you guys think? And they're like, all right, we're on board. Let's get everyone to do this. So she kept it simple. And she had four partners do it. And then as I was scrolling down the rabbit hole, I wanted to see exactly how many people were posting this exact thing. How duplicatable was her strategy? And she purposely made it so simple and duplicatable that people stopped even using their own legs as a before and after. They were using her legs, right? That's leverage, right? You're leveraging Ashley's results. So I was blown away. Here, like the only thing that's different is the hey guys or everyone, like the intro um, greeting, right? but the body of the message is 
literally almost verbatim to what it is. And because it's so simple, now there's there could be 20 other people that were on the sidelines wondering, oh, actually, I don't know if this will work if I put this on my page, right? All the people that were on the fence, they see, you know, how many people is this? It's like, what, six? It's like, you know, 12, 15, 20 people, let's say, posting, copy and pasting the same thing. The people that were on the fence, they're going to have no problem doing it now because the army validated this post by saying, hey, we're all doing it too. And now the people that are on the fence, what do they have? They have FOMO. They have fear of missing out. And it was such a brilliant way that they're able to just simply be like, hey, guys, copy and paste. There's no BOM going into it. Right? So, you know, I'm sure a lot of the people in this room, you guys are so much better at social media than, um, than I am or even, um, you know, Lisa, maybe because you're just accustomed to it. You guys have been doing it more. But we had a partner create these Insta stories, right? And Lisa was like, oh, that's great. And so Lisa copy and pasted it onto her stories. And we were selling collagen like crazy. And we're just like, wow, this is, I think because we had the right product with the right strategy, I think the strategy that the America's region was using was a great strategy. It was simple, duplicatable. It was powerful for explosive growth. But the products, right, that they were focusing on wasn't really appealing to our demographic, to our audience. And I think right now what we need, the type of leadership we need from the people in this room are the ones that are going to be the ones that have courage to be like, you know what, I'm going to make a campaign. I'm going to try this marketing strategy. And it's through trial and error. You know, we heard from Ashley and Rebecca Morris that they've had so many trial and errors. They do a post, no response, right? And then they do 10 posts, no response, 20 posts, some likes. Right? And they're just trying it until they find that one pulse, like the one we're seeing here, that yields results. So you guys have to keep on trying until the results come. Because honestly, this is a time where a lot of the older leaders are going to look to learn from the up and coming leaders, the next generation of leaders who know, who have a pulse on the younger generations of what they want. Even when I came in, I was trained on how to target baby boomer market. It was like, and so I, everything in my presentation was focused on pitching to the baby boomers and the Gen X. Never in a million years would I think that we would have to pivot so fast where it's like, we're not even talking to the boomers anymore. We're talking to the millennials and the Gen Zs. So it's like, wow, we have so much to learn. And that's what I'm realizing as myself, that I have so much to learn from the millennial and Gen Z up and coming leaders on how they're doing it, how their demographics and audience thinks. And so, you know, Now's the time to really um, change the way we view things. You know, I, I came across this photo on social media and everything in this photo is real. It's a real photo. The rock is real. The trees are real. The soil, the dirt, everything in this photo is real. But when you look at it, doesn't it seem kind of off? Something seems so strange, right? Now, if we just change the way we look at it, if we flip this single photo upside down, this is the image we need. Now, doesn't this image make more sense than the image on the left? Right? And, and we've done this build business, right? This business is going to change many times over because this world is constantly changing and adapting. Two years ago, nobody fathomed that most business meetings were going to be done online through Zoom, right? But the pandemic accelerated change. We need to grow. We need to adapt and change if we want to be successful. We don't know how the economy or the world or just business in general is going to change over the next year, over the next five years, right? But our ability to be able to look at things with a different lens, right? For all of my friends who are still working in their linear income jobs, working nine to five, the 40, 40, 40 plan, right? Working 40 years of their lives, 40 hours a week, and, you know, retiring on 40% of their income, right? That's their plan, the 40-40 plan, because they're looking at life like this. And our job is to just flip the lens over and be like, hey, you know, look at it from a different angle, and, it, and this business will start to make sense. And I think now is the time where we really need to embrace it. For me personally, I'm very resistant to change. I like things the way they are, right? So, um, I was struggling with this whole change in our business because I like to do things old school. I like sitting at a coffee shop face-to-face -face with someone instead of doing 
texts or Zooms or whatever. But I realized that that was just me being resistant to change, right? Change isn't hard. Resistance to change is hard, right? So as long as we always stay open and say, you know, it's uncomfortable for me now. It's funny. It, it seems weird to me now, right? You need to have trust and belief that where you guys are going, everybody in this meeting right now is well on their way to being free, to being successful. As long as you keep on going, as long as you don't stop. All right, so you guys are all on your way. Know in advance that there's going to be moments where you guys are going to have to literally maybe change everything you know about the business. You know, break everything down, tear it down to build it up the proper way. And so I think that's kind of where I am personally, where I'm kind of tearing down all the things that I've learned about this, this business and just forgetting everything and relearning everything in this new digital era where social selling was everything. Back when I started, anything on social media was kind of frowned upon. The company was like, take it down. Now the company is like, put more up. <laughs> so, um, you know, we, we see all the things that are happening. So let's take this time now for us to really use this momentum. And I know that I, I've been um, in the leader meetings prior to the Zoom call. And I know that many of us are seeing the results from the college. And for the past year, two, maybe even three years for some, if your business has been on the decline or if it's been flat and you weren't happy with where it's going, know that for it to change, you gotta change. And we have all of the things in place. All of the programs are in place. New Skin focused on the programs and the products, right? And that's what our platform really does provides for us. It's on us to think of the creative way that's gonna target and capture our audience, capture our market through college and through the way that we're gonna really build um, our future lives and our future teams. So um, be open guys, I'm excited for everything that's gonna happen. Um, as we start doing the Zoom calls with OTG, you know, OTG does everything through their Facebook page. So it's really easy to plug into. They have their TEUs on Saturdays and I think Rather than try to create our own thing right now, leverage off the growth, the programs, the systems that all of the successful people in the Americas regions are having. And I think just kind of piggyback off of that and find our color, right? The, the colors for the Asian demographics. And we'll see the best years ahead. Four years ago, when Rich Wood took over as CEO, um, he did a big conference at the Leadership Summit. And all of the team leaders and Blue Diamond leaders were in this meeting, and this was his first debut as the CEO. And he had said, I don't know if I added this slide in here. So in this, in this meeting, um, we were all gathered there, and Rich Wood said, we're gonna change the world. He came out with this quiet and calm confidence saying, we're gonna change the world, and we need you leaders to help us to do it. And he said that America's market is the biggest direct selling market in the entire world, bigger than China, even though China is five times bigger than some population. The US is the biggest direct selling market in the world. And right now we need to focus on the Americas region. Four years ago, we had this meeting. And in this meeting, many of the leaders in the Americas, they said, all right, let's focus on the Americas. And at that time, Rich said, when Americas grows, the world will grow, right? So um, four years later, what has happened to the America's market? It has absolutely exploded, right? When all these people, the leaders you see in this room, put their mind and energy and focus it into one focus of growth in the Americas, and they made strategies to support that growth, what are we seeing? Almost 100% growth in our region. Right. And right now, as America's growing, every new skin market, I had a meeting with my China leaders the other day, and they were like, what the heck is America doing? Korean leaders, what the heck is America doing? All eyes are on the Americas right now. And it reminded me of what Rich said four years ago. And as he passes the baton over to Ryan Napierski, who's going to now be the, you know, take over the world of CEO, we almost have the perfect leadership to take us into the future for our next, you know, growth. So, um, you know, with that, I know this meeting was a little over. I hope you guys aren't too bored or anything like that. But, um, you know, we look forward to, to growing with you guys. 
and to seeing you on the OTG calls. We're gonna have a big Himalaya event for um, executives and up only, for brand reps only, starting in October. The leaders of Himalaya are working on the first offline event in Las Vegas since the pandemic started. And, um, you know, we're planning, it's not just gonna be lectures, it's gonna be fun activities. It's gonna be a, a reception dinner. And we're thinking of all these different things where we can actually um, learn from each other, right? And create that team bonding and team building experience. So with that, I'm grateful to all of you. I'm grateful, especially to the staff for the past year and a half, June, Ellen, Eugene, Ella, and all the other people in the background, um, Lisa, of course, you know, we couldn't have had these meetings without you guys. And I know that all the people that have been consistently coming to these meetings, I have no doubt that we're gonna see you guys on the stage being recognized as the next generation of leaders. So with that, stay positive, work hard, and let's really blow it up this year. Thank you guys.